I think it comes down to the complexity of the organism in question, which is us, and the complexity of the intervention, which is eating. So it's really the worst of both worlds, right? It's, it's, we can study something as complicated as nutrition in a simple organism that can be put in a cage where you can control everything and where lifespan is short enough that you can actually measure how inputs affect outputs on a reasonable time scale. So when you study it in humans, you can do controlled experiments <clears throat> in a research setting, but by definition, they can't tell you anything about health in the long-term sense because it would be almost impossible to confine humans for more than a month or so and control everything they ate. So one can do those types of experiments to understand very precise mechanisms of action, but those rarely translate to a clear understanding of health. If you want to understand what happens over the course of a year, three years, five years, 10 years, by definition, you have to do that outside of a hospital and you have to do it with patients being able to eat what they want. This is why nutrition in humans tends to rely heavily on epidemiology, where you are looking for patterns without doing an experiment, without randomization.